and welcome to the Ideas Lab. So, of course, um, you all know that the oceans are very important for industries such as fishing and shipping, but the ocean's also very important in terms of its role in the carbon cycle and therefore in terms of climate on the planet that we live on. Now, the fact that climate is warming as a consequence of fossil fuel burning releasing CO2 is now widely acknowledged. It's acknowledged scientifically by the IPCC, and this summer it's been acknowledged by leading polit uh, political economies uh, who have agreed to limit warming to 2 degrees centigrade as we go um, forwards. If we want to meet that target of 2 degrees warming, we need to keep CO2 in the atmosphere below an absolute maximum of 450 parts per million. And the current rate of increase shown on this slide will surpass that value within 30 years. But the rate at which CO2 is going to increase during the 21st century is controlled to a large extent by what happens in the ocean. The oceans contain 60 times more carbon than the atmosphere and 30 times more than plants and soils put together. And that's shown schematically by the size of the boxes on this figure. The size of the arrows show you the size of the fluxes um, relative to the 7, gig, uh, 7 billion tonnes of carbon that we emit annually into the atmosphere by fossil fuel burning. About a third of that goes into the ocean, and that's, uh, that magnitude of flux is equivalent roughly to the size of carbon released by China annually. Carbon goes into the ocean just in the surface layer shown here in this cross-section of the Pacific, and that makes it somewhat difficult to predict what's going to happen to carbon uptake as we go forwards in the 21st century. The ocean is warming, making it difficult to predict how much carbon will go into a warmer water, and circulating. And you can see the impact of that circulation here, the red colours in the North Atlantic showing more carbon has gone into the North Atlantic because that's the region where surface waters leave and go into the deep ocean, carrying fossil fuel carbon with them. Now this absorption of carbon into the ocean is good for climate, but it's not entirely benign. And that's because CO2 in the ocean makes water acidic. And you see that here in the light blue curve, decreasing pH as atmospheric CO2 and ocean CO2 rise. So we're seeing an increasing acidity in the ocean, which is going to be very challenging, particularly for species which grow carbonate parts in the ocean, including plankton and corals, which will find it very difficult in the future. Many other species in the ocean and ecosystems will also be impacted by this acidification. And we, we are currently not very certain about how food webs will develop as we go forwards into the 21st century. Now, the fact that fossil fuel CO2 is only found in the surface and not in the deep ocean suggests to you the fact that the oceans will continue to absorb carbon for many years. And in fact, circulation over the next 500 years will incorporate carbon into the ocean. But perhaps we can accelerate that process by pumping carbon into the deep ocean, thereby decreasing the rate at which CO2 rises in the atmosphere. On this figure, we see the effect of that. This is cumulative CO2 emissions relative to CO2 in the atmosphere. The black line is if all the carbon is in the atmosphere, and the blue line is if it equilibrates with the ocean. Here we are today. The oceans have absorbed some carbon, but there's plenty of room for more carbon absorption by the oceans um, as we approach that blue line. We might do that deliberately by pumping CO2 into the ocean, or we might try and manipulate the ocean system to take up more carbon for us. And one way to do that might be to play with life in the ocean, shown on this figure here. Life consumes carbon and moves it into the deep ocean. If we can increase the rate of life in the ocean, perhaps we can take carbon out of the atmosphere. But that's challenging because life is a very efficient user of nutrients in the ocean. This figure shows you in blue the areas where nutrients are fully used and you can't have any more life. But the coloured sections on here are areas where life is not using nutrients because there's not enough iron in the ocean, giving rise to this idea of fertilising the ocean with iron so that you increase life, increase carbon drawdown. That works on a local scale. This satellite image shows a ship track. Uh, the ship is dumping iron out of the back, and as it does so, it's promoting life in the ocean. But whether it works on a global scale is much less certain, and I, like many other scientists, are sceptical that this is a way to really draw carbon out of the atmosphere. There are other ways of potentially doing this, though, and one of my personal favourites is effectively to give the ocean a giant antacid to neutralise the acidity of CO2 by adding limestone to the ocean. But this and any other... Um, geoengineering approach has to be done on a huge scale. This approach would rely on digging up cubic kilometres of limestone every year and putting them into the ocean. So I want to finish with this slide that makes it very clear that the oceans are a very important part of our Earth. 
I hope I've also shown you they're a very important part of the carbon cycle and that we have some potential to perhaps manipulate that carbon cycle going forward to mitigate the effect of climate change in the 21st century. Thank you.